You haven't set the mic yet? Come on! The people are waiting! I'm going as fast as I can! Then go faster! So hungry. Hello everyone, Wee Monkey 2 here, and I'd like to welcome you to our- Faster! Anyway, welcome to our 1000 subscriber Q&A. Jolteon and I have quite a lot of questions to answer today, so we're not going to keep you waiting any longer. Here's the quick rundown. I'll answer all of my questions first, and then Jolteon will answer all of hers later. Thank yous will be at the end. Links in the description for each section. Let's go! YouTuber and animator are actually two different things in this case. I've been wanting to make YouTube videos since 2010, but wasn't allowed to have an account at the time, so I made videos to share with people offline. Back in the day, people used to upload gaming videos that involved putting a camera in front of their TV, talking over their games, and making fun little stories. These type of videos resonated with me when I was younger, so a lot of my earlier content followed a similar structure. However, since most of my family weren't gamers, and my videos were often long, I usually be the only one who would watch them. While I didn't mind being my only viewer for the most part, I stopped making these gaming shorts around 2014, mainly because my interest started to turn towards another medium. My inspiration for animation came around 2013, from a few different sources in particular, namely Fedora CO and Favio Powers, along with the live-action Pokemon commercials that were playing at the time. I was a big fan of the idea of having Pokemon in real life back in the day, and still am to an extent, so seeing these average Joes doing effects like this told me that making my own live-action Pokemon videos wasn't out of the question. I looked up Root of Evil Studios tutorials regarding Pokemon models in Blender, and slowly but surely improved my skills in my free time. It was through this free time that I not only discovered my passion, but learned to love the animation medium as a whole. I'm studying communications, which can be pretty broad in terms of subject matter. Basically, a lot of my time is spent learning how most people interact with the world, and using that knowledge to build clear, concise messages, strengthen relationships, and understand others. This also includes animation and graphic design, so in that regard, I'm also learning how to arrange designs in motion in a way that's both appealing and comprehensible. That said, I want to spend my time after college living a simple life, with a fine balance between work and play. If I ended up getting an animation job at Pixar, or DreamWorks, or some other place that needs an animator or graphic designer, that would be great. But I don't want my work to dictate my life or my identity. I want to have the freedom to focus on the things I love. From big things like my family, to smaller things like going outside for a walk in the morning. My ideas usually stem from interesting real-life circumstances. Whenever a unique opportunity presents itself in my life, I'll often think, what would my Pokemon do in this instance? Or, how can I use this to make an interesting animation? For example, Strawberry Defender came about because a nearby farm was doing a Pick Your Own Strawberries event, while that random lake animation I did a few years ago happened because my family went on a week-long fishing trip in Canada. Even smaller things can work to create interesting videos. Free Day and the Cookie happened because my mom just made some cookies that night, and I thought it would be fun to do something interesting with them. Sometimes I'll get ideas from games I've been playing or songs I've been listening to, but for the most part, real life dictates what I make. Back then, I usually filmed on a whim without much pre-production. I'd go on location with a general idea of the video in mind, record the environment at a crazy amount of angles, then go back to my computer and create the full video as I went. Nowadays, I'd like to create a general outline of my video, along with a script, and a list of assets I'll need to make the video happen. I'll also create a storyboard as well if I need to share my idea with someone else, say, an actor. These extra steps could be part of the reason why the frequency of my videos have dropped, but I think it'll make a better finished product in the end. If the last two years have taught me anything, it's that you won't get anywhere if you don't make things. I know it can be easy to see the faults in your work when you're comparing your videos to others, but you shouldn't let that stop you from finishing or uploading your stuff. You'll never get critiqued that way. Get out there, make an animation the best you can, be proud of what you accomplished, and move on to the next project. With every new video, strive to do something new or teach yourself a new skill. If someone suggests an improvement on your last animation, then maybe that will help you set a new goal. Keep at it, and you'll get better. 
I promise. I also recommend that you check out the 12 principles of animation, as making use of those will typically improve your work. Referencing how people and animals move in real life will help too. While I'd love to have you two visit, the location of our home base is classified, so we can't really direct you here. Perhaps we could meet somewhere else someday? It's hard to list one particular food because I'll often forget some of my favorites until they randomly come up again. Aside from the random junk food answers like pizza and such, I'm a pretty big fruit bat. Grapes, bananas, apples, raspberries, blueberries, they're all good. But I'm a particularly big fan of strawberries, as you guys can probably tell. Well, I'm not really the biggest fan of spaghetti, but I guess those bowtie noodles would be my preferred choice. Those long skinny noodles are a bit harder to chew. It kind of feels like you're eating nothing. I think they're... okay. There's definitely something more to this, isn't there? To put it simply, my upcoming series will be centered around the Poke Ego. More specifically, it'll be an origin story that fleshes out my characters and the world they live in. There may be some classic trainer elements in it, potentially in the form of other characters, but for the most part, the story will be unique by Pokemon standards. Or at least I hope so. Pretty much every model I use in my videos are either from the model resource or are ripped directly from the games from a friend. Shoutouts to Hollow SL. I don't know any other source besides that. Sorry. If you want the Rocky Helmet though, then uh, here's a little tip. Download Mallow's special mixing bowl from the model resource, and then delete the vertices surrounding the helmet. It's not perfect, but uh, hopefully it fulfills your Rocky Helmet needs. Well, I'd love to give you a super epic answer about how I found a new, undiscovered, legendary Pokemon. I can't really say that I did. Most of the Pokemon that I found there were already in the decks. Lots of ice, water, and rock types, as you would expect. There were also a few fire and dragon types as well. That said, I can't deny the existence of a new Pokemon in Iceland, so perhaps some of you folks should head down there. Maybe you'll find something. I'd prefer to save my face reveal for Life of Jolteon 5, whenever the heck that comes out. But I won't leave you empty handed. Here's a detailed image of my Twitter profile picture. This drawing was based off of a real life image of myself. Hopefully this will suffice for now. You guys will see it eventually, I'm sure. Very good question, my friend. It's tricky, especially since we're still gathering research on the topic. The Poke Ego maintains the stance that Pokemon battles are okay as long as the Pokemon aren't forced or coerced into fighting. That said, we are a little uncomfortable with how much Pokemon battles have ingrained themselves into the culture of the Pokemon world. With Pokemon battles being so popular, we could be in danger of forming some generalizations, like that all Pokemon enjoy fighting or that battles should be something that all trainers are skilled in. Galar is particularly scary in this regard. With how much battles are glorified and publicized there, all of our concerns are much more present. This also means that convincing people to reconsider the necessity of Pokemon battles will be much more difficult, as we would essentially need to reconstruct the entire region from the inside out, a task that would be nearly impossible by ourselves. Worst of all, if Galar maintains the status quo, other regions will be a lot less likely to change their ways. So eventually, a new system will need to be put in place in order to protect Pokemon rights, or Galar will need to change somehow. Again, there's nothing wrong with Pokemon battles as long as the Pokemon are okay with partaking in them. But with all the glorification and Galar's downright obsession with the sport, it could easily lead to some bad things if we aren't careful. If any of you have anything to add to this statement, be it a criticism or a new point, please let us know. We only want the best for both people and Pokemon, and hearing your voice would be tremendously helpful for our research. 
Thank you. That depends. It usually switches back and forth for me. I think I like the Kanto design a little bit more than the Alolan design, and in my opinion, I think Kanto Volpix would probably be one of the best Pokemon to hold on a cold, snowy winter day. However, I'm actually quite scared of fire, so I might be a little bit stressed out about it burning my house down. Although I do have a lot of other fire types despite this. To counteract this, I wouldn't need to worry about Alolan Volpix burning my house down, and I typically prefer the cold over the heat. So in the case where it's over 100 degrees outside and the heat is literally killing me, Alolan Volpix would be a great buddy to have. Let's just say that I prefer Alolan Volpix in the summer and Cantonian Volpix in the winter. Having either in my life would be a joy to be honest. Jolteon. In all seriousness, it actually is. Lucario left on a journey a few years ago, so we haven't seen him in quite some time. He was pretty calm though, perhaps a little naive to the limits of his abilities, but his power proved to be more than useful to the group. Kitaker is surprising, my friend. I love the characters, I love the dialogue, I love the weapon system, and I especially love the multiplayer. I nearly bought the game for the multiplayer alone. Should I ever find the opportunity, I'd love to stream it. And that goes for both the single player and the multiplayer. While the news did scare me at first, more info has come out since then that have quelled my nerves. It may affect me a bit, but I think the channel will be fine. Even if the worst happens, and I have to continue without video recommendations or comments, I'll probably just continue uploading anyway. This community means too much to me to just give it up over a new policy. I was hoping somebody would ask this. Simple answer, ACTUALLY MAKE VIDEOS! While I do prefer to work on longer animations with a lot of depth, lore, and themes, I've learned over the past two years that it isn't quite reasonable for me to make a 15 minute long animation while also focusing on college studies, at least while keeping my sleep and sanity intact. To go into more detail, here's what I plan to do with the channel, at least while I'm at college. 1. Rebrand the channel. This won't be anything drastic, but I want to give my channel a distinct feel. For example, if you look at True Green 7's channel, you can see that he has a unique style associated with him. And because of that, you can usually tell when a video is his simply by looking at the thumbnail. I want to have something like that. Something that will make people look and say, Oh, this is a Wii Monkey 2 video. In addition, I want to redesign my logo, make my characters more distinct, make my lore more understandable, and in general, give my channel a more homey feel. You can help me with this too. Why do you watch my videos? What do you associate with me? What do you understand about my characters and the concept this channel's revolved around? How can I improve? I'm always looking for more input, and your advice will be invaluable in this regard. 2. Make short, but entertaining videos. As I stated earlier, I'm not going to get anywhere if I don't make animations. So while I'm at college, I think I'm going to try and make shorter animations. No longer than about 2 minutes or so. Unfortunately, I'm still not going to have a proper upload schedule, but I'm going to try and get as many animations out as I can. Of course, short doesn't mean rushed or bad. I plan on putting in as much effort as I always have, and once I get my diploma, I'll start back up on bigger projects again. 3. Life of Jolteon 5 Oh boy, this. I need to be honest with you guys, I've been having a really hard time getting this thing to happen over the past year and a half, but in the end, it only worked to stress me out beyond belief, which I don't think will be good for you, me, the project, or anybody else involved. I feel like if I continued the project at this rate, what you guys would get would be a big mess, so for that reason, I'm going to put Life of Jolteon 5 on hold for a while. I promised you guys that I would make it, and I plan on keeping that promise, but now is not the time for the project. I hope you understand. 4. Tutorials 
I'm not really sure what I want to do with my tutorials right now. I know I said in my last update video that I didn't really like making tutorials, but since then I've kind of had the small mini urge to start doing them again. Regardless if they're tutorial videos or not, there's still a bunch of things that I want to teach you guys. And my old tutorials that I posted many years ago at this point are now starting to get a little bit outdated because I've acquired more knowledge since then and Blender 2.8 is a thing now. So I'll probably need to go back and update those at the very least. When that will be, I'm not quite sure. They're definitely on my agenda and I do want to remake them at some point, but I don't know exactly when that will be. I guess it'll be a surprise then. Okay, this has to do with that channel rebranding I mentioned earlier. In order to keep things more organized, I was thinking of moving some of the Poke Ego members into smaller roles outside of the group, at least in terms of series lore. That said, because my series is still in its early stages, I can't really say which members will be moved, or if any will be moved at all for that matter. It all depends on how my story is finalized. For that reason, I can't really answer this question accurately. Just know that your favorite characters won't be going anywhere. For 2020, I think I'm going to practice being more mindful. Between schoolwork and personal projects, I sometimes find my mind running at a million miles per hour, which can deplete my energy after a while. So I think taking some time to be present in the moment, be it on a walk or in a quiet room, will do a lot of good for me heading into the next decade. Hmm. Looks like that's it for me. Oh, is it my turn? Uh, um, yeah. Here, come take my spot. Ah! It's time for the main event. Hmm, who's this person talking about? Oh, yeah, that guy. Well, I think he's a big bummer. Maybe a little misguided, but mostly a big bummer. Little does he know. Not particularly. I'm the only electric type in the Poke you go. And even then, fighting isn't really my forte. I guess Flareon could be my biggest rival, but she always makes the first move. If being a rival means being a big bummer though, then Umbreon takes that spot. It's too sour to know what fun is. Me. We met shortly after I evolved, and it was me who adopted him and his stuff. Hmm. I never did get to see how cute I was as an Eevee. The same way other Jolteons evolve. A Thunderstone. I think. Christmas! You get the best things, and as a Pokemon, you're not obligated to give anything in return. play it, but he won't let me for safety reasons. Remember that time I zapped the house out five years ago? Well, the game I wanted to play at that time was actually Five Nights at Freddy's. He wouldn't let me play it because he feared another blackout. But, of course, we wasn't smart enough to lock his computer, so I was able to get my fill on YouTube. That may have, or may not have, led to some problems. So no, I haven't played it, but if we ever lightens up, maybe I will. Don't expect a video, though. Wee's pretty picky about his content here. Slave owner? Oh! Wee. You're saying that like I haven't run away before. Wee technically doesn't own me, so I can leave whenever I want. I'll tell you, running away is quite the experience. Usually worth doing about once or twice a year or so. Any more than that is worth, though. Who on earth would choose to fight for survival when you could sleep in a bed and have Wii bring you food whenever you want? A crazy Pokemon, I tell you, and I'm no crazy Pokemon. Freedom, food, I'm literally living my best life. Oh, well, we have a special scientific cooking staff that does a lot of hours of research to make special immunity cookies. 
We just eat one of those and we're immune to Pokeballs. But our special people are still looking for ingredients though, so we can't really show you how it works. But believe me, it's pretty cool. Okay, I'm not immune to Pokeballs, okay? Please don't catch me. I don't want to leave. Pizza and soda. What else do you need to live on? I never had it because we doesn't like spaghetti. The skinny noodles. Ooh, tough one. Well, I like the ones that are dry, but even still, I think dry things need a little extra flavor to bring out the true taste, you know? So when we gives me berries, he tends to combo them together. My preferred bowl is full of raspberries, with a few Chilean berries thrown into the mix. Apparently getting Chilean berries is too much work though, because we will often substitute those for other Joe Smo berries. The bowls are still tasty, don't get me wrong, but it's just not right. Luckily, we knows better than to give me sour stuff. That stuff is the spawn of all things bad. Oh, now that I think about it, there was this one berry I had a few years ago that just blew me out of the water. I don't know what it was, but it was green, soft, and magical. Everything I ate afterwards was super duper sweet as well, even sour things. I haven't had one since though. So if any of you know what that berry is, can you let me know so we can stockpile them somehow? I'll love you forever. Sure. It may be a little tricky over the internet, though. Hmm. Just know that I hug you in spirit. Wow! Rude! That's sweet. You're cool, too. My moveset is Thunderbolt, Thunder, Thunder Wave, and Hyper Beam. But we is thinking of doing some kind of re-evaluation. So this may change eventually. If he has me forget Hyper Beam though, then expect an earth shattering video drought. Nothing personal, but making videos may be kind of hard under a coma. Way to make the question more interesting, GI. Clearly, I'm the best Pokemon species. But if I had to pick a distant second, it would probably be Charizard. Sitting next to one of those guys is like sitting next to a fireplace. They just take all of your troubles away. And you could fall asleep without a single care in the world. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, it's Charizard. I guess so. Do you like the fact that you're a human? I haven't met too many of them, but they seem like a fun bunch. You all got on the other hand? Eh. I don't know. It looks like she thinks she's all that. Wish I could fly. In the Pokemon world? That's too much math. Let's just say a hundred million billion and we'll call it a day. I've only ever met two or three other Jolteons on Earth, so there's probably not that many. Two hundred, five hundred, somewhere in there. And sure, I'd love to be friends with your Jolteon. It's always nice to meet another Pokemon who can understand all of your life problems from the get-go, you know? I will react to every single Discord video ever, but you guys probably won't see it, at least on a wide scale. If you want to know my thoughts on something in particular though, then just ask me on Discord and he'll show me. He showed me the ropes back when he was super hardcore into it, but I couldn't really grasp it. Logs aren't really my style. Minecraft must be super special if it's essential to human life, though. I think you guys all know. Lee apparently likes this game for some reason. What a nut. Um... Sylveon's my older sister, so, no. Hey, 
Hey, don't ask me. I'm not doing all the crazy research that we's doing. Just don't go walking around asking me or somebody else to fight a giant sheep, okay? Those things are scary. Fire all the way! Those are the wild ones. Gario, my gosh. He always knew what I was feeling. Which was... kinda creepy? Actually, it was kinda soothing as well. I think? Maybe? Uh, I don't even know what I'm feeling half the time. I think that counts as creepy. Absolutely nothing! My life is near perfect as it is. Why would I want anything to change? Maybe I'll go for a new sleeping record or something. Thanks for the idea. You're gonna need to wait until his origin story thing comes out before I'll tell you that. But I will tell you this. It involves a lot of broken glass. Let's see, is there any more here? I, I, I don't see any. I, I guess we're done. No. Thank you guys for sending me questions! Well, I think that's all she wrote. Before we sign off, I want to take the time to thank every single one of you who helped me reach this milestone. It may seem like one person, one comment, or one subscriber won't make much of a difference in the grand scheme of things, but please know that I don't take a single one of you for granted. Every single interaction that you guys have with me, my content, or my community is a blessing, and it can and has flipped my rough days around. This channel has shaped who I am as a person, and your continued support, especially in the face of this animation drought, means the world to me. I honest to goodness can't thank you guys enough. Hopefully, as we head into the future, we can continue to support one another and build a community where our imaginations can live one step closer to reality.